with IRT, welcome to the First Call Plus here on this Friday afternoon, tab.co.nz, the home of the First Call Plus. I have with me Aidan Rodley and Jason Tarn to talk through some of the undercard races from both Ellerslie and Ascot Park, our first port of call. We'll be taking you to Ellerslie and taking a look at race number two on the card as the Petal Pike and Associates 1200, where we see Blue Shadow come up $1.80. Aidan, a horse you were pretty keen on last week and just got hand on a little bit in front. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I uh, did have this horse uh, as a, a clear stand at that day, but come up against uh, How Bad That, who's gone on to win on Premier Day at Tarapa last weekend, so that form looks okay. A horse who trolled up really well leading into that, uh, Jason, and I, I thought uh, had to be you know, well in contention in, in this race. Uh, had the horse uh, sitting outside the leader, the leader in this race is likely to be uh, Rich Billy Marsh. Uh, they sort of, sort of basically sort of fall where they land in this one, Jason. I suppose it depends on how Blue Shadow gets away from the barriers. I think what hindered her when she was fresh is that she missed it and had to be used to find the front. Um, on occasions, last preparation, she settled off the speed um, and also raced right on the speed. But how she gets away from the gates will be significant. I think that really told in the closing stages, that work she did in the first 300. So if she can get to that position trailing Rich Billy Marsh, then she really should be too good for this field, in my opinion. Yeah. Let's go back to Blue Shadow's second placing at Pukekohe. This was on the slow track, and this horse on this occasion is in front there. She is with a tinge of grey. She shows plenty of kick, but as you've already mentioned, Aidan, how about that's a pretty fair sort of an animal, but uh, this horse looked as though there was a bit of improvement to come to. Yeah, exactly. Won three in a row last preparation, and looked really good doing it as, as well. Uh, it just went through the great and good style, and that trial was around Aster, who's got good form as well. So there's just enough about Blue Shadow. And the one thing I, I know you were keen on, how about that to say uh, as being a horse who could be competitive. I, I've got to say I probably underestimated just how good How About That is uh, but I, I've, I've got no doubt that uh, Blue Shadow is, is going to the top grades. I really like her. I, I think if she'd got away on time it, we may have seen a different result. I, I really think the first three or five hundred of that race was material for her. Um, they drew clear of Spindle, uh, both of those two yeah. runners and as you mentioned How About That's one again at Tadapa beating I Got You and Soundworks so it's rock solid form. Um, the Singapore horse, or the ex-Singapore horse Magnum is intriguing. Has trialled up and, and trialled up okay as well, winning a, a trial yeah. at Cambridge. Yeah. Looked pretty decent, had the ears pricked on the line. Um, from Singapore, the form that he brings is very good. Um, way back, I know it's a long time ago and that's what you're trying to measure, but 2016 Singapore Guineas placing behind Debt Collector. Um, reads pretty well. Um, for those that know their Singapore form, probably better than me anyway. But. How do we make some money here, Aidan? Oh, those two horses, I think you, you just play all around uh, Blue Shadow and uh, Magnum at, at 8 50 I thought was just a, a good enough price to be able to just put a small saver on it. One horse that will really appreciate the track conditions is Show em Up, now with Murray Baker and Andrew Forsman, also trialled on the same day as Magnum and was very good in hitting the line uh, Show em Up. So I wouldn't be surprised to see her run a cheeky race. Not the worst form lines uh, from the South Island. and. She's the one that I think might be able to cause a, a little bit of an upset if there is one, but I'd expect Blue Shadow to jump with them, find that trail, and, and just to be too strong. Well, she was um, placed in the Gore and Dunedin Guineas, uh, placed in the, the Warstep Stakes, and beat home some pretty handy uh, fillies uh, down there as well. So she wouldn't be the worst. I, I'd just be a little bit wary of her first up here in the north. OK, we look for her in the Lipitania Colours show them up. Over to race number five we head now, and this is the Victor Wero Whitewater Park 1600, and we see Jason Tarn, the return of weather with you. No $14 around Hinarangi today, though. An exciting gallop of weather with you. Not sure that Hinarangi will take her place in this race on Saturday. That'll be confirmed at uh, scratching time in the morning. But weather with you, given the way that he's trialled up as well, it's not an easy task in rating 75 company for a three-year-old to win carrying 59, so I'd just temper it a little bit, but he is the horse that's going to go furthest in that race you'd expect, and he looks forward enough to run well. Whether that's just a limiting factor fresh up, that weight um, in that class, um, given he's a three-year-old, it just remains to be seen. Exactly. The troll was really good uh, in behind St. Million Big Home Bonneval uh, that day. So showed that he was forward. He was winning a Geelong Classic from the speed uh, last spring. That was against the race pattern that day. It was a very good performance. And remember going back into the Champagne uh, stakes at Alice, Big Home uh, Scott Base. 
uh, who's our Avondale Guineas favourite. So there's good enough form. There's enough natural to think that he's a competitor here. I'm really liking Bellacourt though. Uh, he's a, a, a mare who's dropping back from Westbury Classic last time out. It was a terrific run that day. Had no chance in the sit sprint two starts back. Uh, I thought uh, probably the horse to beat in the race. I tend to agree with you that she's a great price. $9.50 and $3 the place is an excellent price for Bellacourt. So her 800 metres that she ran in that race was very similar to the old Floozy. Uh, Bellacourt, it's just a case that she's always doing it three or four lengths off a horse like the old Floozy. She gets back in the run. You'd just like to see her take a place a couple of spots closer from a draw tomorrow and close to an inside draw then maybe she'll get that chance. I've got it mapped uh, three back one out sort mm. of better than midfield I think I think it's a, a great chance and she'll be in the prime spot and, and uh, I thought the horse to beat in the race. We head south to Ascot Park it is Southland Guineas Day there and also Southland Stakes Cool Lee coming out of the White Robe Lodge. She drops three kilos to 57, $3.60. Star Voyer up to 1,400 metres, Jason Tan. Somewhat of a question mark as most of her best racing has been at 12. Yeah, and I, just the, the way that she's been hitting the line the last two starts, OK, the telegraph, you forgive. I thought she had a chance to run past Johnny Jones as well. So the 1,400 metres coupled with the fact that she's now having to carry 58 and a half in a race where there are plenty of horses with apprentices that can claim in it. I'm just a bit wary taking the shorts on her, that's all. She's the best horse in this race. I've got the ring around her here. She draws barrier three. She, she's going to settle probably worse than midfielders. We've got in the map here with Pasito and Cooley, the likely speed in the race. But Chris Johnson, it, it doesn't matter. You know? You're know, you taking away that uh, that apprentice claim thing by putting Chris Johnson on. He's just going that much better uh, at the moment. Uh, her second at Winger Tui last time out up the uphill straight was only narrowly beaten that day. Before that, she was winning three in a row before tackling a, a, a really strong uh, telegraph handicap. Mm. It, it's the best form in the race. She's the best horse and she should Winning. I, I, I around, think Cooley's better, um, but then I think you're looking think at different Cooley's distances. think Cooley's better than Starboy. Yep, but I mean you're talking about a horse over a mile compared to a horse over 12. Mm. The Starboy beats her over 12, I think Cooley beats her over a mile, and now you're getting a distance where I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Cooley can come well, Cooley out, should have won race this. up to this and win the race. I know she's way worse off compared to weight for age conditions, but there's basically only one horse in here that met her at weight for age, that was Timmy Tyler, right? So yeah, and Timmy Tyler comes in four and a half kilograms better on, which, a, on, which a, is a, plus on a less than a length margin. Which is a plus for him. Definitely. Uh, definitely in this race. But from this point here, okay, the race may not have been run to suit, but is she entitled to go straight past on what we've seen? Well, is, yeah, is it possibly. the track maybe well, that well, Dampin well, doing the brilliant? The beats her. Johnny Jones is in terrific form. He's, he's been the, the star sprinter and in the south. And front of Signify that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and Signify's a, a Telegraph handicap winner, and she's beaten him soundly. And, and, and I would say that maybe track conditions, you know, dampen her star voyeur, that is, her brilliance there, so maybe I'm underestimating that a little bit. But, gee, I don't know. She's, you know, she's giving weight to Cooley. Mm. Chris Johnson, Corey Campbell, does that negate that somewhat? Sure, but, you know, you see, like, uh, Joe Marrera and Zach Purton come again to come up against like um, apprentices like Matthew Poon. They get weight. They are like significantly better jockeys, but they still win races. Like you still got, have to go off ratings and where you think they'll be positioned and all of that. So. I'm not as red hot as you guys on Star Voyeur, that's all I'm saying. Oh, the negative, cool lead, the Star negative Voyeur, man. Star Voyeur. <laughs> that's OK, let's turn the page and have a look at another race out of Invercargill there. Looking forward to the, uh, the stakes down there with Cooley taking on Star Voyeur. Here is the Summer Cup, Fascinate 650, 5.50 accidental offside, down to All Black Magic and Residential, who won the Guineas here last year. Jason Tarn, a horse you're pretty keen on. Yeah, well, the price has gone on Residential. It's $5.50, 4.80 now on 175, so some smarter money than... Um, where mine's coming from is obviously on residential. I, I thought she came to the race beautifully. I thought her last two runs signalled that she was ready to win. Um, so I was happy to back her with a bit of confidence. Yep, uh, residentials. The trek form's good. Uh, the danger, I thought, was Shark T, who was pretty good in running fifth in the uh, the white robe last time. That mm. comes in better than Fascinate and Flying Sardine, who finished in behind her that day. Race 8's a good race. Sheep, Metalcraft, Invercargill, Gold Cup. We see a, a handy enough field lined up here. Come fly with me, who's targeted this race. A, a leader with 60 kilos, 480, the favourite, Aiden. Yeah, it's a, a really even uh, race. It's a, it's a, it's a tough one. Uh, we'll have a look at the speed map here and see that Come Fly With Me is like normal, uh, heading forward. The, the other speed in the race I thought came from Tanifa, who's uh, been good, we won from the front at Gore last time out. Tricky draw for Villa Alba, uh, D&G gets back, you get a, a decent spot for, for Long Harbour, he's a chance to go to Onion and Motorboat Mike as well. 
Let's go and have a look at D&G at Wingatui. We're taking you back to uh, its last start, finishing into sixth position. Long Harbour into eighth, Gordonia ninth here, and Heavy finishes seventh. Clearly D&G the highlight out of this, but look, Pendleton was a, a runaway winner. Aspen Lass into second. Take those two horses out. It was pretty even in behind, Jason. Well, was it what? I think you've described it perfectly. The one horse that I thought may have been able to finish a length or two closer it was Long Harbour out of yeah, that. Yeah, I agree. It was hard to pick up on the video, but it was just after the 800, seemed to dip momentarily, and I, I, didn't, I wasn't privy to the Stipes footage to know exactly why. Um, and that's never a good thing, just when the race is starting to get serious. Yeah. That's when all the moves were starting to be made, and, and she just dipped, and she did completely give it away Long Harbour from a nice draw with Chris Johnson riding, then, then she'd be the one that I'd be looking at in the race. Yeah, me too. She, her winner record in two starts back was very good, and she was good in the north. So uh, I, I thought she was a horse to beat. DNG uh, likely to go back from that wide gate. Uh, was good enough in that... Um, the Needham Cup, but uh, yeah, they were the two. It's not showing. easy to make ground no. at Ascot at the best of times, is it? Like, but if the track is going to be running good and they'll run a bit of time, it's, it's just not a track that well, you want to be getting back and making ground. On this day, couldn't find the rail where it likes it. The Gordonian kicked up and left it out there, come fly with me. And for a horse that likes the paint and likes to rail, it was a, a pretty gallant effort from it here. So just uh, among chances beaten there by Houdia's wins. How would you sum the race up, Jason? Um, I'd sum the race up by taking the odds each way around Long Harbour. I do have respect around this horse, come fly with me, because in the race, it, you know, up against the usual suspects, they're, it's, it's sort of devoid of horses uh, like your Pendleton-type horse or your Aspen Lass that is going to go through the grades. Who dares wins is not starting in the race, so... Yeah, four and one would sort of be my Quinella. DNG wasn't bad in that video just behind and came from a long way back, whereas Come Fly With Me was on speed and it was certainly a race that favoured those on speed, but who's to say it won't be a race that's favoured on speed again? I've dropped off DNG, be... so maybe she's about time, but she <laughs> wins. Jason, we haven't spoken about London Derriere, who's actually the equal favourite. How do, you, how do you line him up in terms of the ratings in this race? Well, he should get one of the perfect runs in the race, and maybe he is one of those horses that actually has more progression than others, even though he is a six-year-old, he is sort of only had the 20 starts, so yeah, maybe it's time that he starts showing over a distance like this that he can be competitive. OK, thank you very much, gentlemen. Good luck on the punt over the weekend, as is the case for you at home here. That's been the first Call Plus with IRT.